So up to now we've looked at how to how we would go about to plot specific functions and um, that would be represented by certain curves. Um, but what would happen in the scenario should you want to print different points like data points? So for example, you are busy um, recording a whole bunch of of um, numbers. It might be temperature and humidity, for example. Um, from sensors and every time you do a reading you record both the temperature and the humidity at the same time and eventually you get this say 200 different um, data points that gets recorded you obviously want to plot those data points and sort of see how it uh, maybe relates with each other and in this way we will actually do that um, in this specific example so we've got our basic structure again that we've looked at we've declared the um, libraries for send input uh, the send library math and ch plot um, but what we're going to now start doing is we're going to declare as a double um, three array, three arrays so i'm going to call the arrays team one which is going to have 100 points in it T2 which will have 100 points in it and T3 which will have 100 points in it I'm going to also declare as an integer I so um, I'm going to be using a for loop over here um, so you'll see Y and points which I'm going to equal to 100. So what I'm doing over here is, you'll see later on, I'm going to be using points to identify how many positions I've got in a specific array. It's just going to help me to um, do my um, uh, looping in a for loop. And so you'll see how that all fits together. All right, and then I've got C plot plot. Okay, so essentially with the for loop, what I want to do is these uh, three arrays I've got, which is T1, T2, and T3, I want to populate them with certain points. So that um, I'm going to like just generate um, values in those arrays, um, which will be the easiest for me to do. And for that, I can use a for loop. So for i is equal to 0, I is less than points, so that's where I'm using points over here, and I plus plus. Okay, so what I'm going to do is my, um, for at least for T1, is T1 of I is going to be equal to I. So essentially, as I increments from 0 all the way up to 100, this array is going to be counting from 0 all the way up to 99. Keep in mind, we've got 100 points, 100 um, positions in our array, yet we've only got 99 positions to fold up with. Array T2, I'm going to make that equal to 100 times sine of i divided by 10.0 okay so what's important is um, you'll see over here I've said 10.0 and um, if you don't put this point zero over here your calculation or your graph is going to look funny and you can actually give it a tie at the end by changing that and seeing how the graph changes. Remember that, um, so what we're trying to achieve over here is that the elements within T2 would be double elements. And therefore, because we're doing plots, we need to use double variables. So this 10.0 will make sure that um, that is achieved. Okay, T3 of i 
I'm going to say that is equal to 100 multiplied by cos of i divided by 10.0. Okay, so I've got three equations over here, and every time this loop is going to be running through, it's going to take the new value of i, it's going to um, do some calculation with it, and it's going to store it into t1, t2, and t3. Alright, so once I've done that, again I need to have a plot.title and I'm saying it's a sine cos um, relationship that we're trying to identify. Okay, and um, we're going to plot dot um, label plot axis x which you can call it let's say x axis so I'm going to you know whatever you'd want to call it for your x axis we're going to have a plot dot label plot axis y and we're going to call that you can call that y axis if you wish whatever you fancy to have your labels called and then what we need to do over here before we are um, going to look at the plotting actual plotting of the points we need plot dot plotting because i'm i'm putting this over here to make sure that i've just included all the commands that i need um, for the plot to happen so now we're going to be looking at the actual command that will be used to plot these um, data points. Okay, so if we're going to say plot dot data two D curves, then we have T one comma T two comma points. So again, we've got over here our X, our Y array. And then how many points are there in both the X and the Y um, arrays? Okay, so let's see what happens when we plot this. So we go to run. Okay, well, firstly, it's giving me an error over here. Um, as you can see, CP plot, I've actually gone and made that that out with the uppercase, that needs to be a lowercase. So it will also change the color over there immediately as well. Okay, let's look at some other areas I'm, I'm just obtaining over here. Um, that needs to be looked at. Okay, well, data 2D curves, it shouldn't be curves, it should just be curve. So as you can see, the actual spelling that we've got of this, these commands are crucial. And you'll see over here that after we've um, done that, we get a sinusoidal wave, which um, is extending between 0 and 100 on the x-axis and between negative 100 and 100 on the y-axis. So this doesn't seem like much, um, but that is the output that we are able to obtain from that can see over here the um, type of, com of, of structure in terms of the commands are very similar to what we've seen before. You'll um, also realize it's very similar in, in fashion and also the type of output that we are, are able to obtain. So what would happen if for example we we go and we say well yes okay the 2D curve is a school I mean, we, to plot something like that is very nice, but 3D curves are really impressive. Well, you could go and you could change this to a data 3D curve as well. Um, so with the data 3D curve um, command, you're going to need to have three arrays that are being input. So that's for your X, Y, and Z um, coordinates, each with its own different um, points. So that would be array 1, array 2, and array 3. And then again, how many points are there 
within that array that you going that it needs to be looking at and to plot. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's see what happens when we run it. And this is the output that we obtain. So it's this sinusoid wave which is almost creating a spiral effect. And um, what's really nice again, it's allowing us, we are able to make it rotate. We can look at it from different angles. We can, and um, I mean, as you do that, you can see the sinusoidal waves being um, created in the um, X planes and the Y planes and the Z planes, um, respectively. So it's quite useful to sort of see, you can see where all the points are. So there's 100 points that have been plotted over there um, for X, Y and Z coordinate points. So we've had a look at how to plot a 2D curve as well as a 3D curve using specific data points. Um, and just to recap again what we've looked over here. So again, we've had our declaration of our um, library ch plot. We've had um, three arrays that we looked at, t1, t2, t3, which each had 100 points in it. We then went and populated those elements within those arrays with specific values. So in here, over here you'll see t1, t2, and t3. Three be given specific values that associated with i in a specific for loop. We then go ahead with the plotting of the title and the x and y labels. Um, that's the standard practice that we've looked at before in a previous example. And then we've plotted 2D curve and um, 3D curves with the um, specific um, structure of the commands as indicated in this um, video. So um, in, in all the examples, you would also realize we also ended the, um, the uh, piece of code with plot.plotting. What's quite crucial is as soon as you do this plot plot plotting, you will be able, you will be going out of this and essentially like you've seen in the demonstrations into another window where the plots are being performed. This is again one of your last statements you want to do um, just before it turns zero, because um, essentially the code that that, ha that occurs in after plot of plotting will not be plotted. So this is this plot of plotting command will not uh, allow for a continuous update to happen in the um, in the um, graphs. It will be taking the data that's been presented to it, and once that has been presented, as soon as you say plot of plotting, it's like the final um, plot that would appear. Okay, so my um, suggestion to you would be. Go and practice, you know, and um, see, change these values that we've looked, change your x axis and y axis values, use other um, functions that you might want to have, other data points you might want to have in your different arrays, and see what graphs you're able to generate. Generate 2D graphs, generate 3D graphs um, using data points. Um, in the previous example, we actually looked at functions, have other functions. One gets really fancy functions that can be plotted. Um, it might be um, functions, functions that you've used in um, certain reports, maybe, or maybe in other courses. And um, what you want to sort of see how it is, relates. And if you go and you change one variable, how will it alter the, the graph? So you can actually do this, and it will be able to generate these graphs quite quickly and you'll be able to do the, the analysis yourself. So what we've looked at up to this stage is your basic um, ways of able to um, plot in a graph that you can quickly get a graph, copy and paste into a report, and then use it as needed.